Um, first, I guess I want to just address why are we even here? Um, it is, in my opinion, and in, in many opinion in my district, that due to the failure of the federal government, or maybe the unwillingness of the federal government to address this problem, that it is being brought up here to the state level. We have seen several other states in, in, in the United States addressing this problem. In my opinion, once it hits the heartland, you know it's a serious, serious issue. You can just look at the presidential races going on, and for the first time in a presidential race, we are having Im uh, illegal immigration as one of the top leading things that all the candidates are talking about. So with that being uh, said, and I will tell you the personal reason why I am here. Uh, for the second time in my senatorial district, um, there has been illegal workers uh, on state-funded uh, projects. Uh, in the heart of suburbia, in O'Fallon, Missouri, two separate times, there has been illegals working on projects that we, as a legislature, provided tax credits or some tax incentives. Um, this not only did outrage me, it outraged several of, uh, of thousands of people in my community. Um, so we, that is how I got into this, this issue. Uh, as I started to look into it further, I saw that the failure of the federal government to address this is leaving it up to the states. The problem that we run into is federal law does preempt state law. What can we legally do as a state to address this problem? And what I think you see here before you in Senate Bill, or the Senate Committee substitute for Senate Bill 858, um, is drastically different from what I had uh, proposed. But I think the reasoning is because this is what I think legally we can do to address this problem. Because the last thing I want to do is ask my fellow senators uh, to vote on something and send it out and be it tossed out by the courts. So with a lot of hard work, a lot of input from this, I think that what you see before you is something that will stand up to any constitutional challenge. Uh, with that being said, I'll just walk through a little bit what this bill does. Basically enacts tougher laws to crack down on illegal immigration in Missouri. It enacts very strong penalties for employers who knowingly hire illegal immigrants, and, uh, individuals who transport or harbor them, cities that even provide them a safe haven. It's sending a very strong message that Missouri will stand tough against anyone that engages in illegal activity in regards to unauthorized aliens. This bill also ensures that the state tax dollars will not go to support illegal immigration and bars illegal aliens from attending public universities and colleges in our state. Uh, this bill ensures Missouri will work very closely with the federal government to determine the legal status of anyone arrested or detained by law enforcement and furthers cooperation with the federal government by prohibiting any government entity from interfering or obstructing communication with the federal government on the legal status of individuals. I'm here to testify in favor of strengthening the law when it comes to employers who hire illegal workers. Uh, and I, actually my office did a little analysis of the cost and the lost revenue in terms of individual income tax to the state of Missouri due to employers hiring illegal workers. And I thought it would be important to share that with you all. So you've got a copy of the report in front of you and I'll just walk, walk you through it a little bit. It's pretty simple and straightforward actually. It's based on the fact um, and the source of our information was the Pew Hispanic Center fact sheet estimates that there's 35 to 65,000 illegals in Missouri at this time. And so what we did was just calculate the loss in income tax revenue to the state and to the federal government. And what we came up with was a loss in individual income tax revenue to, to the state of Missouri of between 26.4 million and 49.1 million. And on the federal side, it was a loss of 215.5 million and 400.3 million for a total of 242 million and 449 million on the low and the high side of that, depending on, upon which number uh, you used. So as you can see, the, the problem of employers hiring illegal workers uh, is quite evident in the, in the loss in tax revenue to the state. And it also creates an unfair ad advantage for those employers uh, who are not paying those uh, required taxes to those law-abiding employers who are paying those taxes, which I think is what Senator Root uh, is concerned about as well. Um, originally, we had planned on testifying against this bill but in light of the fact that there has been a committee substitute introduced in this committee substitute, although I have not been able to read it in its entirety, it appears to address a number of our original concerns. 
and we greatly appreciate the senator and this committee working on those issues. Uh, additional things that, that we would appreciate the consideration of this committee looking at as they move forward is making sure that we don't put businesses in a situation where in complying with a state immigration policy, they then get subject to lawsuits from employees for a wrongful dismissal claim. And I, I point specifically, and again, I apologize, I've not been able to read the bill thoroughly since I, I received it at the beginning of the committee, but 285.535, um, in which you have a situation where once the employee, as I read it, once the employee has the ability um, to put the put an individual through the system, comes back as a as a no match, uh, they then dismiss them. And there's a, a claim made against that employer. Uh, then the yes, sir. Well, that, that that's the verification. I mean, the verification it's not system spelled out, but it's a federally authorized verification system. And I'm assuming it was done that way. That way, if you verify is unfunded next year, which it could be, uh, there would be a subsequent or something program. Else comes to something else comes to replace it. Um, it gets into the situation where, in order for that employer to contest uh, that dismissal in, in 285.535, it goes back to a system under, eight, it's defined as 8 U.S.C. 1373, but it's essentially the I, uh, Immigration Naturalization Services database. Well, the problem that I think you create there is that the employer has run the system, in theory, would be running the system through E-Verify, which is a database combined of Social Security Administration and Homeland Security Administration's databases and combines it. Well, to do this secondary check that the state would then be doing, they have the authority only, since they're not the employer, only to submit it to INS or ICE uh, now. To, to do that check. And there is the potentiality that ICE's database is different than the Homeland Security meshed SS, uh, Social Security Administration database. And so that's a concern that, that I don't think that is intended and, I, and we'd be happy to work to make sure that we find a way that you don't get subsequently penalized if you did your check, you used the system as you were required, but the other database showed a negative that, I, I don't think it's the intent and we appreciate any consideration that can be lent to that. Additionally, uh, in a wrongful dismissal claim, we have a concern that, and it's addressed in 285.535.2 as well as point .12, um, where it goes into the issue of a frivolous claim. And the concern that we have is the possibility of uh, uh, maybe competition coming forward and saying, well, they, they, they've hired illegal immigrants, and we want to file a claim against them, that company then has to go through the process of defending themselves. In, in point 12, that issue is d discussed in terms of a frivolous claim. Uh, our concern there is the damages that can be awarded. Uh, I believe it reads actual and compensatory. And in a claim such as this, and an issue with immigration, it's hard to defend your reputation if you are accused of uh, being a purveyor of illegal immigrants when maybe you've been using this, this authorized program. And I, I apologize, I'm not familiar enough with how we would do it, but something like a liquidated damages clause that you would have in contract where maybe we can set a, a, a very high penalty uh, for those individuals bringing frivolous claims simply because we have created a, uh, a private right of action where any citizen in the state of Missouri can be levying these claims and this could be a very expensive process to defend for employers who are using the, the, uh, the verification system, whether it be E-Verify or, or its uh, future counterpart. And those are, are things we'd appreciate the consideration of this committee. And, and